there are a number of options that you can set on the transaction log, and I want to run through the most frequently used ones right here and then go out into the uh, management console and show you how to set these. First of all, your first question on your transaction log is what size should it be? Now, there are no hard, fast rules. I will tell you that 25% of the new database size is what you get by default. So if you create a database that's 100 megabytes and don't mention the transaction log, it will default to 25% of that or 25 megabytes. Now, here's the thinking uh, on, data, on transaction log size. If you know that this is going to be a highly updated database, you probably want to go ahead and make the transaction log a little larger so that it doesn't have to grow so much. However, if you're building a database that's not going to be manipulated very much, like data warehousing situations, there's just no point in having a large transaction log out there. You can set the thing at 1% or 2%, 5 whatever. So keep that in mind. If you ever take the certification exam, watch those scenarios on questions. If it's going to be a highly updated database or manipulated database, make that transaction log a little larger. If not, make it a little smaller. 25% again is the default. Auto grow. Do you want to auto grow this transaction log? Most of the time, yes, uh, you do, because when the transaction log fills up and can't take any more data, your database stops. You can't do any insert updates or deletes to that database. So that's generally not a good thing to happen. And uh, your database only stops. It's almost a federal law, I think. It only stops uh, on Friday afternoons at about 4 o'clock or the afternoon before you start your vacation. So just be aware of that. It's something they've somehow built into this thing. Uh, the growth size, keep an eye on your transaction log. If you set it to unrestricted growth size, that's okay. But if you're not backing up properly and you lose uh, control of this, you will fill up your entire disk with your transaction logs. One of the things, and we'll talk about it in monitoring later in a different video, is monitor your transaction log size. Then, of course, recovery models. We'll talk about those again when we do database uh, restores and backups. I'll show you in just a second here how to set those. And then the last one, watch for those implicit transactions. For the most part, you're safe here. Insert updates and deletes are implicit transactions. They begin and commit automatically. However, there is a set implicit transaction setting that can be made per connection. If this is turned on, then you will have to begin and commit a transaction. What happens if this is turned on and you don't know it? You do an update. It updates the database. But the next time the transaction log gets backed up, that is an uncommitted transaction, and it comes out. And the change that was there is undone, back to the original value. So this is not a huge problem, but it is possible, and it is a trick question on the exam sometimes. So watch for this. So let me go out into the management tool, and let's take a look at how to set some of these. Let's right-click on our database and go to Properties. And you will notice that if I look at Files, you'll notice the second line here is my transaction log. So I can set auto growth on my transaction log by percentage or megabytes, whichever I would like. And I can restrict the file growth. And here they've set it to 2 gig. Or I can do an unrestricted file growth. Whatever you would like, just make sure you set that. Then we've already talked about the location uh, on the uh, transaction log. And then let me show you how to set that recovery model. You've seen it before already in the course. But it really is in a weird place. You have to go to Options on the Database Properties. Now, I right-clicked on the database to get here and opened Options. It's the second thing in the list here, and it's the recovery model. And that does affect the transaction log. Kind of weird that they put it there, but that's where it is. Okay, And that's where we choose Full, Bulk Logged, or Simple. And again, I will mention those again when we do backups and restores. Uh, implicit transactions, by the way, is not in this list. It shouldn't be changed. The real problem with it is that when ANSI standards are set on or off, uh, this will come into play there. And I would suggest you go out into documentation and look at set ANSI and look at the various settings that can be done there. Because when you set some of the ANSI settings, you're setting a whole family of settings, and implicit transaction falls into some of those, and it can surprise you. So anyway, just be aware of that. Those are some of the options that you need to decide and deal with on your transaction log implementation.